is here. And so whatever it is that you're looking for, today I want to invite you to receive it, to claim it in the presence of God. Amen? Are you ready? Come on, I can't hear you. Are you ready? And so let's all come together with one faith in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You can lift up your hands to heaven. It's a sign of surrender. Receive His blessings today. Your mercy 
There is nothing like your presence, God. And we thank you that you are here, that we have access to your presence no matter how sinful, no matter how weak, how frail we may be. And today, God, we believe that you are walking in this room. And because, because you are here, we believe that nothing but only beautiful things can happen. For worry cannot thrive in your presence. For sorrow cannot thrive in your presence. Brokenness cannot thrive in your presence. For you are here. You are walking and you are changing us. You are changing this room. Do your mighty work in us. Do your mighty work in our hearts. This is holy ground for you are here.
today, Lord, to enter into our lives, to walk in the room, so to speak, to walk into the room of this feast, on-site and online, to walk into the room of our families, of our relationships, of our marriages, walk into the room of our finances, of our businesses, of our careers and work, walk into the rooms of our health, of our hearts, our home, and even walk into the rooms of our heartaches, O oh God change everything for we believe lord that in your presence the chains of sin and struggles fall we believe lord that in your presence fear and anxiety and worry will bow we believe that in your presence sickness and shame will be healed and in your presence hope will arise from the depths of our souls to the tips of our tongue as we proclaim your praise as we proclaim your honor and glory come on sing it out loud joining us online thank you very much for tuning in and for those of you who are on site thank you thank you for being here um, just by your very presence here this afternoon it means a lot to us because it means something because you came here risking the possibilities of course we've been meeting here for four weeks now and it's been safe it's been secure and it's been really flooded with the Spirit of God yes but also, you being here, it cost you something, diba? Right? Yes? It cost you maybe commute money for those of you who came here by commuting. Or maybe for some, some of you, it's gas money. And these days, that's not cheap anymore, yes? But it just shows the position of your heart. On site and online, it shows the position of your heart that you're willing to lean in, to draw closer to God. And Scripture says, those who draw near to Him, He will draw near to you. He will walk into the room of your lives and change everything. Hallelujah. So it's good to be here, yes? Hallelujah. So for those of you who came here for the very first time, we are also just so glad and blessed that we have you in these few moments this afternoon. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So just for introduction's sake, for those of you who our, our, new, our first time gets. My name is Mike Vinas. Um, I lead Feast Bellevue PM. This feast, alongside Brother Oying Isidoro, who is our feast builder for Wednesday Feast Alabang. Now, um, he would have wanted to really be here today. However, um, he was asked by his doctor to take certain medical tests. I think he started last week and even to this week. But he's doing fine. He's just also to. He's also requested not just to take a test but to also to rest. So we're praying for his rest and for his favorable test results. Amen? Amen. But, but, today to preach 
in His place. We're just so delighted to have Him here with us. He is a man that I've known for pretty much maybe half of my life or even more because we grew up together in our youth ministry. He was even my leader then and I still look up to Him now with His wisdom, with His leadership and humility. In fact, it's amazing because they're close friends of ours, Be and I, um, along with his wife, Love. It's amazing how in this pandemic, with all the challenges and the difficulties, the Lord has really enlarged their ministry online through social media, impacting so many lives. And I'm just so excited for all of you that you get to encounter, you get to experience that today firsthand. So please welcome the feast builder for Feast Carmona Cavite to preach the first part of this message, Brother Drews Kosho. Grabe. Nahiya ako dito bigla. Good afternoon. Um, I just want to say thank you to Brother Mike for inviting me here. I just want you to know that before I transferred to Feast Carmona, I was in Feast Southwoods, from SM to Southwoods. And the last feast before the lockdown, I wasn't in my feast. I was here in Feast Bellevue PM, co-preaching with, uh, with Mike. And hindi pa kami live sa Feast Carmona, naghahanap pa kami ng venue. But the first feast again, as we start, Dito pa rin sa Feast Bell BPM, so... <laughs> Thank you so much for inviting me here. I, I always believe there's no accidents in this life. There's no coincidence. Bakit dyan ka nakaupo ngayon sa upuan na yan? Bakit nakatayo ka dyan ngayon? Maybe you chose to be here today. You're excited. Maybe someone invited you. To those who are online today, ha? Mag-go online ba ako ngayon? I always believe in God's presence, there's only divinidence. Because you showed up, God is showing up, and He wants to bless you. If there's one thing that I learned in, in this pandemic, na grabe nahiya talaga ako, it's, alam niyo, when you preach online, and ang kaharap mo camera, then you're at, in your own room, there's no stage, there's no beautiful music like this, live, where in yung kada ampas ng drum, napapaganon ka, di ba? Sa bahay, di ka napapaganon eh. Okay ba yung internet ko? Ganti tingnan mo. If there's one thing that I learned is, alam niyo, habang palalim ng palalim yung message ng feast, lalo ko nahihiya kay Lord. Kasi lalong, when, when everything, when all the extravagant parts of the ministry is gone, lalo na expose yung hindi ko pa nagagawa sa buhay. I don't know if you felt that. Pero, unu-una, akala ko umay eh. Nung pangalaw, nung huulul, sabi ko hindi, nahihiya ako lalo kay Lord. And that's when I realized that habang lalo ko nakikita ang hindi ko pa nagagawa, lalo ko na namang naramdaman ang mga kayang gawin ng Panginoon sa buhay ko. Amen? And that's, that goes the same thing to everyone here. And if you're ready to be blessed, let's pray our favorite prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's all pray today. I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I... So that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I am God's servant. I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. You can take your seats and tell the person beside you get ready to be blessed. Mike, thank you for inviting me here. It's an honor. I'm humbled. I'm really humbled to be here. Um, talk number three, citizen. Talk number three is World changers. Can everyone say world changers? Paki sabi sa katabi mo, hello, world changer. <laughs> Maybe you're asking, ako, world changer? The one big message for today is this God is calling you back to Eden. God is calling us back to Eden. Ano ba tong Eden na to? Hindi tong Eden na keso. Ito yung, yung Eden wherein God created the, the garden in Eden, kaya nga Garden of Eden, that's where He placed the man. It's a place where God is king. And I want to start with this story. Can, sige, meron akong gustong pakita ang picture sa inyo. Ito yung picture ng babaeng na meet ko sa ministry where Mike and I used to, to serve in the youth ministry. Tapos, itong babaeng to, naka-pink siya, naka-jacket siya, 
Tapos first timer siya, first timer siya in the youth ministry. It's in Bukas Loob sa Diyos youth, youth Ministry. Tapos kami during that time, kami yung youth leaders. Yung tatlong lalaki sa likod, kami yon. So we were asking yung first timer, tapos pinapunta sa harapan. Noong nakita ko tong babaeng to, nagandahan ako sa kanya. Tapos sabi ko, ganda niya itong batang to. Sabi ko ganyan. And you know what? Anong tawag ko sa kanya? World changer siya. She's really a world changer. You know why? Ask me why. Binago niya ang mundo ko. Grabe. Grabe. Pakita mo yung next picture. Ayan, yung next picture natin. Naka-on na ba ito? Ayan, next picture. Ayan. Dahil binago niya yung mundo ko, lumaki pa ang pamilya namin ngayong pandemic. Grabe yung ginagawa ng pandemic, ha? Di ba? Nagkaroon kami ng isa pang anak ngayong pandemic. And world changer to mga to bakit nung araw nung kaming dalawa lang habang misa nandiyan kami nila feel na feel namin nakaluhod iiyak pag umangat yung Eucharist pero ngayon habang may misa kagano kami anak tulog na <laughs> di ba iba our world changed why i'm sharing this simple analogy to you because maybe you think am i a world changer but maybe there are people in your lives that became a world changer to you suddenly you realize mahal pala ako ni Lord yes there are people in your lives that experience ay oo nga no Next picture, itong mga taon to, grabe world changer itong mga to. Ayan, no? Pag nakita niyo, ay grabe yung mga yan. Talagang pag, pag wala akong question sa mga yan, si, si John, alam ko, nandito rin ata si John Silan ngayon eh. Yung mga taon na to, grabe world changers ang tawag dito. Now, maybe to some of you, ang world changer nyo is a basketball star. Because nung na-meet mo yung basketball star, biglang gusto mo maging basketball player. Maybe to some of I don't know ha, mag-ingay na lang kung totoo to ha. Maybe to some of you, ang world changer nyo, mga Korean dramas. Oh my gosh, dami. Di ba, suddenly, ak- akalain nyo dati, hindi kayo puyat, ngayon puyat na kayo. Di ba, bakit? Isang episode pa. Isang episode pa. It, it, these are the world changers in your life. Well, today, I'm gonna share to you that God is calling us to be a world changer. What kind of world changer? Because God's plan is to rebuild Eden in our world. God's plan is He wants us to build it with Him. That kind of world changer. A good change that brings us to a place where God is King. And I want to share to you three people who were world changers in the Old Testament. Uh, mga friends ni Daniel, sila si Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. And these three people were, were Jews. They live in Jerusalem. But they gave, they, they suddenly nagkaroon sila ng bagong pangalan. Again, world changer, new name. They had a new name. Their name suddenly were changed to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Okay? Can you say Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego? Ayan, kailangan memorize nyo. Tatanungin natin mamaya yan. Okay? So this, nabago yung pangalan nila. Who among you here, just raise your hands, in your entire life, Hindi ka tinawag sa pangalan mo ng pangalan mo lang. Meron kang ibang nickname at natawag sa friends mo. Meron ba dito? You had a new name? You had a new name? Di ba? My name is Andreus Kosho. Andreus. And then when I went to the youth ministry, people were asking me, what's your nickname? Wala po ako nickname. Why? I don't really have a nickname. Andreus. Kasi I cannot tell them the name na binibigyan ng nanay ko. Ah, Andrew Ting Ting. Andrew... Ganon, hindi pwede sabihin, di ba? Baka tumawa. And then suddenly one youth member, ah, okay, we'll call you Drews. So, they removed the A-N, naging Drews. Dreus turned to Drews. Okay nga naman. Another name. School. Anong tawag sa akin sa school? Surname. Di ba ganun sa school? Ang tawag sa akin, Uy, Kosho, Kosho. Di ba tatawag pa sa bahay namin nung araw? Wala pang cellphone nung araw. Ang, ba- ang phone nung araw, yung mga dial or yung dependot. Di, inabot niyo ba yun? Meron na umabot doon? Totoo? Di ba yung aabangan mo yung toot? Eh, 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 eh. Di ba? As kinakausap mo pa yung operator, the telephone number you dial is not at in service. Ano? 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 Kinakausap mo pang ganun. Tatawag sa bahay namin. Hello, pwede po pa kay Kosho? My mom will ask, sino sa amin? <laughs> Di ba, high school, they call you by their surnames or college. And then suddenly, I, I got married. I had a new name. Bakit? Ang tawag sa akin ng asawa ko noong una, baby. Di ba? Nung nag-aanak na ako, Daddy. And I have a new name now. Bakit? Ang tawag sa akin ng anak ko, Papa. Ang tawag sa akin ng misis ko, misan, Sunjunggi. <laughs> Pagbigyan niyo na ako, nasa akin ng microphone. <laughs> I had a new name. But these people, they had their new names, not because they wanted it. This is what happened. 
Imagine you're 11 years old, 12, 13 years old, and you're in your village. Nung bata, ako ang sarap makipagkaibigan. I remember the first time I played with my neighbor. Yung nakita lang kami, anong pangalan mo? Ikaw, ganito, laro tayo, laro na kami. And you were playing like that. Imagine you're in that setup right now in your village. And everything is fine. You had your favorite milk tea. Maybe you're watching your K-drama. Or you're doing your vlog. You're watching your favorite videos. You're watching Netflix. You're with your friends. And then suddenly, while you're playing, there's a big army who entered your village or your city. And that's what happened to them. Suddenly, they saw people being killed in front of them in the Old Testament. Suddenly, okay naman kami, nag-i-enjoy kami, pa, 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 and suddenly, boom. What happened? Big men are, uh, the, 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 the older men are being captured, they're being killed, and then the kids, and everyone was exiled into Babylon. That is what happened. It's not a good thing that, that na nangyari sa kandilin. And after that, what happened? Nung nagising na lang sila bigla, bakit tayo nandito? Kailan matatapos to? So they were asking two important questions in their life. Number one, how did we end up here? And number two, is, is, is there still hope for us? Kaya ang ganda ng worship kanina, hope. Can everybody say hope? Because God was giving them hope. Is there still hope? Pakakaalis ba tayo dito? Maybe it's the same thing in your life right now. Lord, why am I here? Bakit nagka-pandemic, I lost my job. Bakit nagka-pandemic ni business ko, biglang 50% nagkaroon ng problema? Or maybe, bakit nagka-pandemic, I lost someone in my life. Why am I here? And you're asking the Lord, Lord, is there still hope? And that was the question of this Jewish people inside Babylon. Hanggang kailan tayo dito? Hanggang saan tayo dito? Lord, 45 na ako. Wala pa rin akong boyfriend. Hanggang kailan ba ako dito? Diba? You have different questions in your life. And the entire story... The whole story of the Hebrew Bible was designed to answer these two important questions. And it was framed in the Babylonian exile. Fact, the oral tradition of the Old Testament started many centuries before noon pa. Oral traditions, okay, para hindi tayo manusbid dito. Kung meron kayong questions about theology, ask Brother Mike, okay? But oral traditions, this is important to us. You know why? Ask me why. We're Catholics. We have to understand our roots. Bakit itong belief natin? Bakit itong design ng Bible pag binasa mo? Bakit meron siyang may mensahe from, from Old Testament to New Testament? And it was, the big part of it was this Babylonian exile. The Babylonian exile, it, we're, we're answering these questions, and the final shape was formed during the Babylonian exile. Why? Okay. Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve sinned. And then they, were, they went out of Eden, di ba? Di sila makapasok. And the, Babil, the, the Jewish people can, can relate to this. When they read the story of Genesis of Adam and Eve, and then what happened after the Tower of Babel, people were uh, wanted to create the towers of sovereign task because they want to, to be higher than God. What happened? God confused their language. Kaya nakaroon ng iba't ibang languages, di ba? We have English, we have Japanese, we have Chinese, we have Bisaya, Kapampangan, Jajemon, di ba? Duma may mga lingwahin natin bigla, Korean, di ba? And and Babylon and Babel. In the Bible, in Hebrew, they use the same word. And it's giving a very important message. Bakit? Like, kasi yung mga sa Babel, they want to be higher than God, and God said, no, I'm the king. And in, in Babylon, it's giving a, 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 a big message as well, that nandiyan kayo ngayon, I'm, I'm, I'm still the king, not the Babylonian king. So I'm still the king, relax lang kayo. And that's the message of it. And then what happened next? Abraham. After that, Abraham was asked, Abraham, alis ka na sa Ur. Punta ka saan? Sa promised land. And where is Ur? In Babylon as well. So God was removing people from Babylon to the promised land. If you take, may pattern na pansin nyo, may inaalis si Lord, binabalik niya kung saan dapat. And then after that, centuries after, Moses helped the Israelites from Egypt to the promised land again. Now, I'll cut it short. What happened here? The authors of Genesis in the Old Testament was always telling that God keeps on removing people in the place they're not meant to be and to bring back in the place where God is king. Now, what does it have to do with us? Ask me what? Inaalis tayo ng Diyos kung saan tayo hindi dapat. All throughout our life, God is placing us in the, in the Garden of Eden where He is king and where He will bless us. Amen? Kaya misa parang, talagang dito ba ako? Ba't mo ko nilalagay dito? Trust the Lord.
Because throughout the Bible, God was calling us back to Eden. Now, these three people, they have three responses. Okay? Three responses ang ginawa nila. Paano yung kung nandun ka na sa place nila, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Number one, the other response of the Jewish people were rebellion. Ayoko dito. Familiar? Ayoko sa boss ko. Bakit ako nandito? Ayoko dito. Ang gagawin mo? Aawayin mo. Magre-resign na ako. Isang taon na, magre-resign ka pa din. Di ba? Eh, nagka-pandemic, Lord, wag mo kong tatanggalin sa trabaho. Di ba? Sa dili, biglang, Lord, salamat, salamat, salamat. Rebellion was the first response of people. They were fighting the Babylon people. Ayoko. Number two, second response was compromise. Ano compromise? Kesa patayin ako, I will follow their culture. I will worship their gods. I will turn away my face from the Lord. I'll save my life. That's compromise. Kaya nga may, di ba may story nung, ulitin ko lang to, may story nung pare na nagko-confession, may dumating. Father, forgive me for I have sinned. What is your sins? Father, pasensya ka na, nakaka-19 na akong paring pinatay. Ha? Takot yung pare, 19? Oo, parang gusto ko nga mag-20. Ano nangyari sa'yo? Eh kasi may sakit ako kapag alam ko naniniwala sa Diyos yung pare, pinapatay ko. Ikaw ba, Father, naniniwala ka ba sa Diyos? Sabi ng pare, napag-isip. Uh, actually, dati-dati lang ngayon, trip-trip na lang. <laughs> what happened there? Compromise. Can you say compromise? We've been compromising in our life. I, I know a time in my life where I compromise as well my faith. Di ba? Bakit? We chose the other path. And other people, they compromise. Wag nilang. But the third response was this. Served. Can you say served? This is what God wants for us, all of us to do in our life, to serve. The three people, the, the friends of Daniel, the four of them, served. Ano ginawa nung, nung, nung apat na to? They followed the laws, the, the, the um, guidance of the Lord to the prophet Jeremiah. During the time of exile, sabi ni, Je, ni Lord kay Jeremiah, build homes and plan to stay, plant gardens and eat the food they produce. Marry and have children. Then find spouses for them so that you may have many grandchildren. Multiply. Can you say multiply? Multiply. Ah, multiply. Do not dwindle away and work for the peace and prosperity of the city where I sent you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, for its welfare will determine your welfare. Ano sabi ni Lord sa kanila? Nandiyan kayo ngayon? That's not the kingdom that I want you to really, be, to really live. But right now, while you're, there, while you're there, serve ka. While you're there, serve ka. And these people, itong sila Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, sobrang galing nila. As in, kitang-kita nung kahari yung, 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 yung talents nila. They're so good. That's why in Daniel, it says there, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah were four of the young men chosen, all from the tribe of Judah. The chief staff renamed them with their Babylonian names. Ito na. Daniel was called Belteshazzar, Hananiah was called Shadrach, Mishael was called Meshach, Azariah was called Abednego. But what I love about what they did was this. They were serving with their enemy. Kaya mo yun? Kaya mo ba yun? Alam mo, may nabasa ako sa Facebook and I want to share it with you right now. Sino sa inyo ang may nakaaway na? Raise your hands. Ah, oh, ah. Oh. Yung iba, wala pa. Kawain niyo yan. Diba? Sino sa inyo yung meron kayong, nung, sa buong buhay niyo may isang tao nung nak- nakikita niyo parang talagang hindi mo kasundo, ay mo makasama, taas ang kamay. Ayan, ayan, ayan. Sabi niyo, isa katabi ko yun, nakakahiya. Diba? Alam niyo, I, I read this in Facebook, may nagsabi noon, kung meron kang nakaaway na tao na hanggang ngayon hindi mo gusto, may utang kang pagmamahal sa kanya. Ang lalim, diba? But that is what God was telling them. Serve and be faithful. So what they did, they served, but they remained faithful in their faith. Question, in pagan territory, in pagan environment, can you remain faithful to God? Can you remain faithful in times of crisis? Can you remain faithful outside the, the walls of Bellevue, of the feast? Where you sing worship here, and then when you go out, other people are singing different music, and they're hurting you. Can you still serve the Lord? Can you serve the Lord in front of that person who's, who's hurting her family? Mahirap yan kung akong tatanungin, palaban ako eh. Itong values ko, itong character. And I realized, oh Lord, I was being a rebellion. But God was telling us right now, serve. Can everybody inhale? Exhale. O di ba, naamoy niyo, hiningan niyo sa mask niyo. 
Balik sa inyo lang naman yan. Serve. God is calling us to serve. Why God wants us to be world changers. First, how they served, how they became world changers, itong tatlong to, they were excellent. They were really, really excellent. It says there, when the training period ordered by the king was completed, the chief of staff brought all the young men to King Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked with them and no one impressed him as much as Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Grabe, no? So they entered the royal service. Whenever the king consulted them in any matter requiring wisdom and balanced judgment, he found them ten times more capable than any of the magicians and enchanters in his entire kingdom. Fact. The king na naginip siya eh. And he was looking for answers to his dream. Walang masagot doon mga magicians niya at mga wise people niya. Only Daniel and their friends. Ganun sila kagaling. And they were excellent. Can you say excellent? Alam mo bang it's a, a perfect display of faith when you're excellent? Alam mo yung, di ba pag kumain kayo sa labas, saan tayo kakain? Saan masarap? You'll not say, saan tayo kakain kung saan may panis? Hindi. Anong bibili mong damit? Yung butas. Bakit? Ay, trip-trip lang para maganda. Oh, hindi. You'll always look for something good. Why? You want excellence. That's why you watch the beautiful movie, the great teleserye, sports, you're looking for the championship because we all want excellence. You don't go into customer service, tapos yung tao sa restaurant, sisupladahan ka, magagalit ka. Because you want excellence. And these people, they were excellent. The only way to create a better world is to be a better person. Amen? Kaya itong election, totoo, bumoto ka, sige lang. Ba't huwag mong malimot na maging maayos na tao, maging God-fearing person, and a, ser- a servant for the Lord. The, the, our country needs excellence in family. Galingan mo rin magpatawad. Galingan mo rin magmahal. Huwag ka lang magaling kumain. Galingan mo rin magluto. Amen? Be the best version of yourself so that you can be the best blessing for others. Second, eto na. They were faithful. This is the last part of my, my part before I call on your builder, Father Mike. In that pagan culture, Daniel and his friends believe they were representing God. And sana tayo rin. Sige na, nagkamali ka na, nagkasala ka na. Pero sana pag naalala mo nagkasala ka, maalala mo rin kay Lord ka pa rin. Para makatayo ka kagad. Amen? Kasi iba, gusto gusto mo nagsiswimming sa anun? Sa guilt? Oh, minigawa akong mali. Ilang ligo na brother, ayaw pa rin matanggal. Di ba? Hindi. If you remember that you belong to God, this is what happened to Daniel, to the friends of Daniel. I love it. In Daniel chapter 3, Nebuchadnezzar was so furious. Why? He built a big altar. And sabi sa mga tao, worship the God that I created. Now, this, this people, no, we will not worship your God. We'll serve, we'll serve here, but we'll not worship your God. So they were furious. And sabi, ni, sabi ng king, sa kanila, um, Furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that his face became distorted with rage. Galit na galit. He commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. Then he ordered some of the strongest men of his army okay, to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So they tied them up and threw them into the furnace, fully dressed in their pants, turbans, robes, and other garments. What happened next? Ito na. Sige. But suddenly, the Pekadnesar jumped up in amazement and exclaimed to his advisors, Didn't we tie up three men and throw them into the furnace? Sunugin mo tatlong yan? Yes, your majesty, we certainly did. They replied, look, I see four men unbound, walking around in the fire unharmed, and the fourth looks like a God. Alam mo, curious ako dito. Curious ako dito. Kasi nung araw, isa yan sa mga punishment eh. They have malaking metal na ganun. Papasok yung tao, susunugin. Nung nakita niya, yung sabi niya, it looks like a god. Ano kayong itsura nun? ba? Kasi kung tao lang yun, it looks like a man. Pero sabi niya, no, no, it looks like a god. And people during that time, ang bilis nila ng god, ibang itsura. Ano kaya nakita niya? Ano kaya yung looks like a god? Pakitingin nga yung mata ng katabi mo. Mukha bang sa Lord ang gumawa sa kanya? Yes naman, di ba? <laughs> okay, my daughter is calling already. <laughs> Looks like a god. And you know what happened next? Sabi ng king? Sige, next, let's show the next slide. 
Then, then the king came as close as he could to the door of the flaming furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stepped out of the fire. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to even higher positions in the province of Babylon, in the province of the one who destroyed Jerusalem, to the province of the one who, who took everything and placed them in their place in a foreign land. They were promoted. Anong ginawa nila? They were world changers. They proclaimed, in this foreign land, I'm gonna tell you, our God is still the God. Can we do that? Sige, plakpaka natin sa Lord. Pero hindi madaling gawin yun sa itong buhay. Tama, di ba? Kung ako yun, sunugin yan, sunugin! Makakita ko yung anak ko, ay, susunugin na ako. Sino, sino, sino mo worship? Yun na lang, yun na lang. Diba? Pag-iisip ka pa rin eh. In front of your challenge, can you do that? Ah, it's easy in the church, but outside is difficult. Do you agree? Kapag kinat ka na sa biyahe ng kotse, hindi mo na maaalala ang kristyano ka eh. Diba? Ba, trip to ah. Diba yung mga driver dito? Kanina, na, na, galing akong Laguna, yung isang adventure, oh. ginanon na ko, nakastop kami, umandan, nagasgasan yung kotse ko. Saan? May anak lang akong kasama, di ba? Ano, mapapa, oh, God bless you. Ganun na lang gagawin mo, eh, di ba? God bless you na lang magagawa mo. I'll show you a picture of Tito Jojo. Tito Jojo is one of our pillars in the ministry before when I was still in SM Santa Rosa. Tito Jojo used to have a different life before entering the feast. He was having a different, <laughs> mga bisyo, uh, no time for the family, he had the heart problem, and then his problem led him to the ministry. Nag-ikot lang siya ang sabi ng doktor sa kanya, magpumasyal ka, maglakad-lakad ka, mag-alis ka ng stress mo. Naglakad siya sa SM Santa Rosa. Then umakad siya sa cinema, nakita niya may feast. Ano yung feast? Umupo siya doon sa pinakataas. And then during worship time, umiiyak siya. And it changed everything in his life. And he became one of our pillars. And then you know what, what one of the things na ginagawa niya in his village? Every time lumalabas siya, may mga group of people who had stroke in the village. Pinupuntahan niya yung mga, mga stroke survivors in his village. Tapos, yung mga stroke survivors, minsan nagbabike sila. Hihinto ni Tito Jojo, nakakotse. O, oh, kamusta na kayo? Okay ba kayo? O, oh, galingan nyo, ha? Mahal kayo ni Lord. Ginagawa ni Tito Jojo, iniisa-isa niya. And then something happened. Tito Jojo had a stroke in the time of COVID. Wala makabisita, hirap kami. Bakit? Bawal puntahan sa ospital. So, nung napuntahan ko siya, nakapagkwentuhan ako sa kanya. You know what happened? Ay niya lumabas ng bahay. Ay niya bumangon, hirap siya. Kasi yung masakit ng ulo niya, nalaman ng mga taong tinutulungan niya sa village. You know what happened? Ask me what? Nagsama-sama yung mga pinutulungan niya. Lahat sila pumunta sa loob ng bahay. Inakit siya sa kwarto. Sila ang nagbigay ng hope kay Tito Jojo nung kailangan niya na ng hope. Nakakaiyak. <laughs> Pero anong ibig sabihin nito? Tito Jojo was a world changer to their world. Are you getting me? Simple lang, di ba? But the other friends na namit niya became a world changer to his world. They shared God 360 degrees. It is what God is calling us to do. To be a world changer wherever we are. And to give more Let's all welcome your ako, humble, great builder, dear brother, Brother Mike Vinyas. God bless you. Thank you, Brother Drews. Can we give him another big hand? And along with that, let me just, he doesn't like this, but I just want to honor the presence as well of Brother Jan Silan. I know he's in the house. He's our feast builder for Feast Makati Salcedo. Nasa ka Jan, kaway kaway. Ayan, ayan. Wala na. Nakaalis na. All right. But anyway, I wanted to mention, I think I saw them earlier. I wanted to make mention of that before I go into my message. Because truth be told, kami nina Brother Drews, ni Brother Jan, and myself, we all grew up in the same youth ministry about 15, 20 years ago. And naisip ko lang with what Brother Drews was sharing earlier about uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, um, remember he was saying that the king of Babylon threw them into the fire because they didn't want to bow to, to the statue, to the idol. 
And I was thinking the one reason why they were faithful, that they stayed on and continued in, in believing in God and serving God in spite of being in the fire, in spite of all the challenges, was because hindi sila nag-iisa. Diba? Diba sa buhay, pag mag-isa ka, it's so easy to falter, to fall, to make mistakes, but pag, may alam mong, pag alam mong may kasama ka in the journey, na magkakasama kayo going through all of that, growing and serving and just continuing to follow God, it's easier. And I make mention of that today because the reason probably we're, we're all still here 15, 20 years later is because even for me, I'm thankful for these two guys who's just been with me every step of the way and just um, encouraged one another and just helped each other continue to be faithful. So with that, can we just honor Brother Drews and Brother Jan as well? So just as a recap with our study of Scripture as started already by Brother Drews. So the Jewish nation was invaded by the Babylonians. And what did the Babylonians do? They ransacked every, everything, destroyed everything. At not, not contento dun. What they did was they held captive the Jewish people, at least most of them, and brought them back into their homeland, into Babylon, to treat as servants. And oppress them and just do not so good things, okay? But years later, eventually, the Lord revealed into the heart of the Babylonian king to set them free, to set them free from exile. So, exile simply means that you're outside or you left, you, you left your homeland. So, pinabalik na sila to Jerusalem. And that's where my part of the message starts out. So, if we were reading earlier from the book of Daniel, if you continue to read on in Scripture in the book of Ezra and Nehemiah, you'll find out that, yes, they did go back to their homeland, to Jerusalem. But when they got home, to their surprise, their homeland, their nation, their country was still under oppressive and harsh foreign rule. And what made it worse was their fellow citizens, their fellow Jews, were still so deep into corruption and sin. And so they, they, they were thinking, we're home now already, nakabalik na tayo into our homeland, and yet, it still seems that we're in a spiritual exile, that we're still longing to be in a place where God is the king of our nation and God is the king of our lives. So that's where they're at, and that's what, um, what I will continue with in, part of, in this part of the message, because years after they've returned, Parang walang nag-iba. Parang ganun pa rin yung, yung bayan nila. And it somehow echoes sometimes how we feel about our country. Yes? Parang walang nagbago. But years later, a Jew named Jesus entered the picture. You can say, as we were saying earlier, he walked into the room. He came into the scene. And when he came, it changed everything. So he calls out and he makes, a, makes an announcement to everyone that he is going to build a new kingdom, a new world order. And he makes that invitation to the people then to build a kingdom and he makes that invitation for anyone and everyone to join him in building that kingdom of love. And I'll tell you, my friends, that invitation still stands today. Those who were invited 2,000 years ago, and that invitation extends to each and every one of us to this day. That you are called, Jesus calls us, you and me, to be world changers. To build and establish the kingdom of God in this world that we live in. And to have His rule and reign forever in this world. See, we may be in the world, but we not may, sorry, we may be in the world, but we don't have to be of the world. Yes? Because God calls us, Jesus calls us to be world changers. But here's the thing, okay? And this is where it gets real for all of us. 
Because yes, we, have, we all have a calling from God that He wants to use us, that he, that, that he wants us to serve and build this kingdom. And it's all good and nice to hear. But in my 20 years, 20 plus years of somehow being part of building the kingdom of God, I have heard so many, and, and I'll include myself here, I have heard so many objections to that call. So many excuses, if you might even say that, to that call. And I'll somehow summarize them today to three. Three common objections that we have against the invitation of Jesus to change the nation, to change the world. Three objections. Okay? But before I mention that, can I invite you all to stand with me? Because I'm thinking you'd listen better, you'd lean in better if you're standing. So are you with me? Yes? Yeah. Let me just drink. So objection number one. Okay? The first objection. I just want to save my soul. Or I just want to save myself. And I've heard this many times. People would say, Me? Ako? Change the world? Mike, I just want to live a simple life. Make enough money, provide for my family, go to church on Sundays, somehow live a good life and save my soul, save myself, and then hopefully one day I get to heaven. That's it. That's all I want out of this life. And really, there's nothing wrong with wanting those things. In fact, I get it. I get where people who would say that, where they're coming from. Because I myself would have that, those objections sometimes to the call of God. In fact, I'll be honest with you. Remember last week, na meron akong inamin sa inyo, I confessed something that I've never told anyone else. Remember that, yes? For those of you who are here, para dun sa iba sa inyo na mga marites at nagtataka kung ano yung inamin ko sa inyo lahat, panorin na lang yung feast last week. Nasa Facebook feed natin yung YouTube link. But anyway, this week, I want to confess to you again something that, uh, that I think you should know as well uh, for me as a feast builder, okay? Um, last December, I got a call and it was from the company that I previously was working uh, with, the company I used to be part of before becoming a feast builder, before, before doing all this. They called me up. And just to cut the long story short, pretty much what they were saying, after nine years of being away, they were offering me a job to come back to return and eventually lead a department of the company. And when I heard that, I'll be honest with you, it was tempting. It was tempting, why? Because of the simplicity, the stability, and the security that it offered. It was so tempting. Because with everything that I do, and I'm not complaining, okay? Don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining, but I just want to be honest with you. With everything that I do as a feast builder between preaching every Sunday, leading our feasts, training our leaders, discipling people, counseling people, running meetings here and there, doing even more. And over and above that, have to provide for my family. I'll tell you, sometimes it can get exhausting. It can get burdensome. And it can get complicated at times. So much so that I found myself talking to my wife recently and telling her, especially with that phone call, I was telling her, Ve, why don't we just live a simpler life? I'll just take the corporate job, make enough money for our family, provide for our future, secure our future, and let's just go to church, let's just go to the feast and just attend. Just a simpler life. And, and that was something that we thought about, we prayed about. And it was so 
tempting again to pursue. That, that, that was it. Just to live for me, myself, my family, and eventually, hopefully, get to heaven. Right? Nothing wrong with that. And for a lot of people, this is what they think Christianity is all about. They think that it's about just looking out for yourself, looking out for your dreams, your plans, your goals, and, and maybe living good enough for us to win the good graces of God, trying to prove ourselves as if we can really do that, and eventually get to heaven. We, we think that sometimes that's all there is. Take care of ourselves, take care of our families, and we're good. And yet, when I look at the life of Jesus in Scripture, when you look at His life, we are reminded that following Him means looking out for others more than looking out for ourselves. Yes? See, God calls us not just to take care of our own, not just to take care of our own plans and dreams, not just to take care of our own money, not just to take care, take care of our own family. We're called to take care of others. And let's be honest. In these last two years in the pandemic, we're talking about a simpler life. Many of us got a taste of this simpler life. Because everything got canceled, our schedules were less complicated, walang traffic, and we were just at home, living a much simpler life, right? But for many of us, we got so adjusted and attached to this simple life that now we're finding it hard because we've become too com comfortable, too complacent, and now that things are opening up, picking up, we're finding it hard to transition into this new season. So two questions that I just want to ask us to ask ourselves about this. One, are you living the full life that God intended for you to live? Just thinking about yourself, just thinking about your own family, just wanting all that. And then two, more importantly, who are you living for? See, because God is not opposed to a simple life, but He is opposed to a selfish life. God doesn't want you to live simply small just for yourself, just for, for the people around you. God actually wants you to live big, to live beyond yourself and bless others. Because again, Christianity is not just really about getting to heaven, making mo most of what you can do here, taking care of only the things that you care about and just getting to heaven. That's not Christianity. Again, God is not calling us just to simply go to heaven. God is calling us to build, to create heaven here on earth, especially for the suffering, especially for the lost, the broken, and the hurting. We ought to, to, to not only look at our own lives, look outward to the need in this world, to the need in our nation. So that's the first objection. The second objection is this. And maybe many of us could relate as well. The second objection is the problem is just too big. And I heard people say this, Mike, there's just too much corruption, too much suffering, too much poverty, too much darkness in this world. What can we do? It's useless. It's a useless fight. See, sometimes we look at the world around us, we, we look at the, the difficulty, right? The challenge. And we see all this corruption, this sin, this darkness, this, this evil in the world. And we look at it like a seven-headed monster with 800 tentacles. And suddenly we're, we're afraid and we're paralyzed and we don't know what to do. And even for some of us, we don't even bother doing anything anymore. But I'm reminded of this story. There was once a man who was walking by a beach. Now, the day before he was walking, there was a storm. And because of that storm, it washed, uh, the waves washed to the shore thousands upon thousands of starfishes. It was just on the shore, under the heat of the sun, drying up. 
then as he was walking, he sees a kid, he sees a child picking up one starfish at a time and throwing it back into the water. One starfish at a time and throwing it back into the water. Seeing this, the man approached the kid and said, there are thousands of that across the shore. And so, what you're doing is useless. It won't make any difference. And you know what the kid said? He picked up another starfish. He looked at it. He smiled. And he said to the man, Well, to this one, it makes a difference. It makes a difference to this one. And he throws it back into the water. So we may not make a big difference to all, but to those who God has entrusted us with, to the one. Kahit isa lang yan, it makes a world of difference to them. One, one other example of this is our home for abandoned elderly, Anna Wim. This is our foundation. Right now, in our capacity, we can only serve 70 lolos and lolas in total. Now, you might say, that's a drop in the bucket. Baliwalayan to the whole fight of poverty and somehow for the people who need that kind of care. Abandoned elderly. You might say, parang anlit lang no 70 and it doesn't really make a difference at all. But remember again, to those 70 who are there, who doesn't have anything else, no family to return to, to those 70 souls, it means the world to them. So my friends, how do you change a nation? How do you change the world? You love one person at a time. See, we can't do everything, but we can do something. Yes? Mother Teresa said this. She said this. I love this quote. She says, I alone cannot change the world, but I can cast a stone across the waters to create many ripples. Amen? Amen. Let's go, guys. We're going to sing in a bit. Third objection. I don't have what it takes. Or my version of this, my personal version of this is, I think I'm not enough. Any of you have said that before? Right? Wala? Ako la. We all have, at, at least maybe at some point. And maybe for some of you, uh, you would say, what can I do, Mike? I'm just an ordinary human being. Tao lang ako. Ano magagawa ako? And if you're feeling that same way today, if that's your objection, your excuse to the call of God over your life, then I'll tell you, I won't even argue with you, I won't even disagree with you because it's true. We are ordinary people. We are weak and wayward people, broken and lost in varying degrees, trying to find our way. But God can still use us. Yes, God in His grace and wisdom can use us in spite of all that. And we may all be in somewhat of a spiritual exile where we're longing for Eden, we're longing for, for a place where God could really be king in our lives, in our nation. But for that to happen, my friends, for that to happen, for God to be king of our lives, king of our nations, we need to let God build Eden in our hearts. We need to build His throne. We need to allow Him to build His throne once again into our heart of hearts and crown Him king. Because I'll tell you, the only way, the only way that you can change this country, the only way that you can change the world is to first let God change your inner world. That's what we're going to ask God to do today. We're going to open our hearts because we want to see the change in our world, but it all starts here by making Him King of our hearts today.
maybe for some of you, there's a part of your heart, a part of your life that maybe on that part, the throne is still your throne. And maybe it's time to dethrone yourself there and let God be king, even of that area, of that part of your life. If you believe in that today, this is your moment to crown Him King over your life. Let's pray. I can invite you to lift up your hands if this is something comfortable for you. Close your eyes with me as we pray. And allow me just to lead you in prayer. King Jesus, let our hearts be holy ground. Let our hearts be holy ground where your throne would be built and that your kingship, your kingdom would be established. Change everything, God. Change everything in our lives. Change everything in our hearts that is not in alignment with yours. And lead us, God, to be the change in this nation, in this world. Lead us, God, that from the hearts that you've built in us to be holy ground, that we would advance your kingdom, making this nation, making this world holy ground for your glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. that indeed God wants for you. Because I'll tell you, the greatest fulfillment you'll get out of this life is not just for simply taking care of your own, taking care of your family or of your own interests of your own money. But more importantly, you'll get the best fulfillment when you begin to take care of the people around you, to take care of the lost, the least, the last, the broken, the hurting. And you don't even have to look far. Maybe that person is in your family. Maybe that person is in your office. And God is calling you to serve them, to be a world changer. Because you never know, just by touching and impacting a life, it changes their world and they go out to change 
the world in Jesus name amen 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 you can be seated praise God and to lead us in our giving please welcome back brother Drew Skosho Can you just say to the person beside you, thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your generosity. To, to everyone who's in here, you've been generous to, to God, giving back your time for being here, giving back your talents by serving. Yung iba sa inyo, na-excite na kami kasi mag-serve na rin yan sa ilang linggo. Kasama na rin dito. Amen? For giving your, your treasures to the Lord. And in this time of pandemic, there's one thing that I've learned it's to give to God both, actually, indeed both, eh, three day. In times of plenty, in times of empty, and in times of worry. Alam yun ng pandemic, um, one of the, ano ba, yung masakit sa pusun talk na binigo sa mga corporations are talking to companies whose half of the employees are being retrenched. Ang sakit sa dibdib. So what we did, me and my wife, we decided to increase our giving even if we're not receiving yet much in time of pandemic. Because it was pandemic, people are in need. Sabi ko sa kanya, magtiwata kay Lord, lalo pa tayo magbigay kay Lord. And we just keep on giving. Supported businesses, promote mo sa social media page mo, um, PPEs for hospitals. I gave free videos to, to, to hospitals for, for encouragement and prayers. Nagwalt ako mukha ko, nasan doon, nagpipray during pandemic. But the greatest breakthrough in our life, in, financially, happened also in time of COVID. Nagwalt kami when a big break came to us. It was, an, it was offered to us. I thought we were just gonna serve few hospitals by providing uh, video materials to them here in Metro Manila until the contract grew big. Umabot kami hanggang Mindanao. Luzon, besides Mindanao. It was one of the biggest, and we were also helping. Alam mo, ang nakakaiyak doon, yung mga nawalan trabaho ng mga videographers, nagka-business bigla. Uy, wala ka bang ginagawa? O, ito, top kita. Nasaan ka sa Mindanao? O, may project ako, kailangan ko. Tapos, nagpapasalamat sila, salamat po, may pagkain yung pamilya namin. Alam mo, lahat yun, si Lord. Gracia. Hindi namin minarket yun eh. Dumating na lang. Sabi ko nga sa misis ko, saan galing to? Alin na sa mga giving natin ang namunga? Baka konti pa lang ito. Marami pang mamumunga in the future. And when we give to God, I always tell this, we don't give to buy blessings. Tama na yun. Yung Lord, hihingi na ko ha. Lakihan ko. We always give because we're grateful to the blessings that God gave us. Lagi tayo nagbabalik. Kapag yan ang puso mo, hinding hindi ka mawawalan. Kahit konti ang meron ka, dumadami pag pinamamahagi sa iba. Amen? So, can I pray for their love offering? We'll do that later. Ah, later. Oh, sige. So, thank you. Thank you so much. And God bless you. Thank you, Brother Drews. We're gonna go into our announcements in a bit, but I just wanna... Pray. Let's pray for Brother Drew. Um, bro, sorry, I, I, this wasn't planned, but could we invite you just here on stage with you and love? Just we want to pray over you. That's okay. Or, sige. Di kahit sige, kahit dito na lang. You want, yung inaana ko gusto niya dito daw, bro. <laughs> Hi, Anya. Okay, so it's so loud now. Praise God. Thank you so much. Drews and love kosher, everybody. Hallelujah. Let's extend our hands over them and let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful family that just continues to testify of your faithfulness, of your goodness and grace. It's amazing what you're doing in their lives, in their ministry, in the feast, or even in social media. You're indeed um, using them, God, to impact so many lives. And we just pray that as you, as they have been used to bless so many people, that they too would be blessed in every way, financially, in ministry, in their marriage, in, their, in, the, in the lives of their children, God. We just truly declare for abundance of grace, favor, and power over their future.
And we're also believing God for Feast Carmona and the whole Feast Cavite district. We pray for a breakthrough. We pray for miracles, Lord. We pray that you would lead them to the right venue to be able to start again weekly, live, in-person feasts. And we pray for every person that you will lead their way. That, that, that every person will just find your grace, your love in their feast and that they would grow and flourish, God, to be a feast that will truly serve you and build your kingdom. So we thank you for this family who's leading the way to make that all possible. Bless them and use them mightily. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Thank you very much, guys. Before we end our feast, just a few more announcements before you go. First off is we are one week away from Holy Week. And so we would like to invite everybody to join us for... To, to journey together as one feast family through our online Holy Week retreat happening on April 14 to 16. That's Monday Thursday to Black Saturday, 9 a.m. online via Facebook pages and Feast TV YouTube page. And then that Holy Week journey, we will conclude that with our own Grand Easter Feast here at our home. And so we would like also to see you on April 17. We have sessions in the morning as well, 10, 8 a.m., 10.40 a.m., and then our session here is at 3 p.m. Here, of course, at the Bellevue Hotel. First come, first serve pa rin po. And so, yeah, we would like to remind everybody to please bring your vaccination cards with you always. All right. And of course, kung di kayo makapunta doon, please know that we are also streaming this live online. All right. And also, we would like to uh, let you know that Facebooks is having a promo right now. Get up to 25% off on all faith and spirituality books from March 2 to April 16. So, hanggang Holy Week po. Shop at feastbooks.ph and they are also available online at Lazada and Shopee. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Para may plano kong bibilin ka mamaya, ano? <laughs> We want to welcome those of you who came here for the very first time. Can we just give them a big hand? Thank you so much. After the feast, after, and we're about to end in a few moments from now, it, we want to give you a welcome gift. We want to give you a Didake devotional prayer gift. And to be able to get that as you exit, just turn right, and you'll see there our welcome lounge, our welcome tables. Our team will be there with you to be able to give your gift and somehow just to welcome you here in the feast. So thank you so much for coming. Um, last announcement, and I wanted to be the one to be able to announce this because most of the message of the talk really calls us to do something for the kingdom of God. And maybe for some of you, you are called to, to maybe express that in service to the Lord through the feast. And really at this season in time, we are in need of volunteers and we need your help to be able to continue to sustain this ministry and build, build God's kingdom as we reach out to more people. So these are the, these are the different uh, roles or positions, uh, servants that we're looking for at this time. So if you're a videographer, if you're willing to serve as part of our visual tech team at the back, a video editor, photographer, lay minister, uh, lector and commentator, we need your help guys here in our feast. And so you can go to this link that bit.ly that uh, bit.ly slash feast connect or uh, just scan that QR code to be able to sign up and express your intent. And for those of you who'd like to also serve as part of our Wednesday Feast Alabang team, and I think soon they'll be able to uh, also um, build their feast again or while they're still here, if you want to be able to serve as part of their team as well, you can go to that same link. So we're, we're, we're needing help. We're needing help. So maybe you're called by God to be a world changer here in our feast. All right? All right, let's all stand. Were you blessed? I'm blessed because we're ending, well, not yet on time. We, we, we were been, we've been targeting to end at 5 in the last how many weeks since we've begun. But this is a good time, 5.08. You're happy we're ending early? Yeah? Or you want to you have more? Pwede pa namin patagalin, di ba? More worship. <laughs> I'm kidding. Let's all lift up our hands, lift up your love offering envelopes as well. God, we thank you for our feast today. We thank you for your word preached that has steered our hearts to be world changers, Lord. Help us to look beyond ourselves, to look beyond just looking out for ourselves and begin to open our eyes to see the need where you are calling us 
for us to meet that need or even exceed that need, Father. We thank you for the call that you have in our lives in spite of maybe all that we've done in the past. You still see us child. You still see us servant. And we're thankful, God, that you continue to call us and draw us closer to you. I pray for every hand raised here. I pray for every family represented here. I pray that you would just bless them and and pour out your grace, your spirit over their lives this coming week. And whatever struggle or trial they're facing, grant them the grace and the resiliency to overcome. And for whatever um, challenge or prayer petition that they have for this upcoming week, that you would reveal yourself mightily through your miracles and grace over their lives this coming week. And we pray that we get to see them again together, hear their feast next Sunday. All this we pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's all sing. Thank you, everybody, for coming today. Let's worship one more time. Come on. Your love as fast as the seas and the earth.